and not surprisingly, in China, you know where it's reddest? In the interior. Because they're blue states around the coast, too. Flow of food. Most fascinating one to me is an agriculture kid from Wisconsin. Rice comes basically out of Asia. Big surprise. Sugar comes amazingly out of Brazil and nowhere else. Beef comes from the core south. Australia, Argentina, Brazil, Chile. America doesn't export that much beef. Lots of water here. It's New Zealand, you saw Lord of the Rings. Saudi Arabia milk. Sends almost all of it to Asia, which has doubled its dairy intake. And it still would have to double it again in China, for example, to get up to Japanese level, which is half of what Americans eat in terms of dairy. I know, I got the kidney stones to prove it. But here's the really interesting stuff. In terms of the grain and the protein that most people eat, because these are kind of, that's weak protein. Here's the good stuff. Soybeans, uh, pork, overwhelmingly from Western Hemisphere to Asia, and Western to the rest of the world, corn and poultry. The core in general sends wheat to the gap and a lot of aid. I'd like to point out, per my Soylent Green, core has about a billion fat people. Gap got a billion malnourished people. Think about it. <laughs> right now, only about 10 to 15 percent of food moves across borders. I'm telling you those numbers are going to double fast. And it's going to make food the most important network in the world. It's going to eclipse energy, which is going to get much more smart grid, locally consumed, generated by a ways. Why? Middle class wants to eat. I make 10 times as much money as I did in college. I don't drink 10 times more beer. I like a nice scotch. Much more intensive. So you're going to see why that makes sense in terms of where water is. Percentage versus water. Europe, getting by. Africa, the only problem is it rains twice a year. Oceana, big surprise. That's where you get all the dairy. Five times as much water as they need. Asia, 60% of the world's population, only one third of the water. There's a huge Achilles heel. We are one quarter of the population of Asia got more water. There's a real advantage in the future. But it's not going to be necessarily geographically spread so evenly. But here's how it works out in terms of grains. Big surprise. Those who got water can export grain. What is grain? Grain is water in food form. Meat is just food in extreme form. Everybody else imports. So when these guys over here start importing a whole lot more, China starts buying big chunks of the corn and soybeans coming out of America, drives up the price here. Guess who has the Arab Spring as a result? Now read the op-eds. It was the price of food that drove everybody crazy. Because you could put up with stuff until you get hungry. Now you do climate change on top of that, look what happens. The places where you can grow food, OK, better. Places where you can't, much worse. Turns out, that's where all the population growth is and where all the water shortages are, and where all the religious extremists tend to be, because religion tends to be a survival mechanism in tough economic times. So no big surprise. Very gap-centric, equatorial-centric. Climate change just makes it worse. So how the Americas evolve. Here's America today, 50 stars, as I like to point out. If you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Americans, turns out only one of them is Hispanic right now. You can check his card. Jump ahead to 2050, though, going to be a little hard. Because that Hispanic's going to be one out of three. Big change, the Latinization of America. Everybody's going to be Hispanic. I like to point out, American history in terms of my family's history. Joseph Barnett comes here before the Revolutionary War, fought with Washington, he fought with him twice, quit during the winter because he looked around, saw these people with chicken pox and whatnot and said, screw this, I'm going back to Pennsylvania. This poor guy, he didn't even have any stars on his flag. Can you imagine him talking to his grandkids? When I was an American, we couldn't even afford flags with stars. All we had was a cut up dead snake. <laughs> You rotten kids got it nice. 
So here's my second generation. He gets 13 stars. My third generation, he's up to 24 when he's born. My fourth generation, this guy born in the Civil War dies in the Cold War. Okay, he sees stars go away, come back, added back more. So my grandpa, 1896, 45 star flag. My dad only gets two. And what do I got? Bupkis. <laughs> and if that happens, I'm not only just the first Barnett never to have a new flag, this guy's the first president to ever be born and die under the same flag. So when I look to the Western Hemisphere, I'm talking about an America that needs to get back in the business of expanding. China adds back colonies, EU adds stars. You either add stars or you lose them, like the Russians. So I'd like about 70 stars before I get out of here. <laughs> and I think we should start talking to the Canadians, because they've got a bright future. Climate change is going to drive a lot of people north, so the pressure won't stop, okay? We can make it all about drugs, but that won't stop the pressure either, because it's getting amazingly violent. The most deadly conflict in the world last three years, south of the border, not even close. And you've got rebellion in the United States. 30 US states are basically walking away from the drug war. Why? They're tired of imprisoning people at 65K a year. Hell, I can get a kid through Harvard at that price. And you can be just as illiterate. <laughs> but I'll have a degree to make it official. What's going to draw them up to the north? It's going to get harder to uh, make food happen in the south. But look what happens. Here's where we grow wheat now. Don't tend to grow it where they have the droughts, OK? So Texas kind of half and half. But look what happens by the middle of the century. You're growing wheat in Alaska. Okay. Great book on the subject, The World in 2050 by a Geographer. Points out the new powers of the North are going to change everything. Climate change drives everybody to the North. Here's the body that's going to govern it, Arctic Council. Hillary Clinton showed up first time recently. Big deal. Shows that we're starting to take this seriously. Look who belongs. This is a nice bunch. I'll get drunk with any of these people. <laughs> And that's another thing you notice about the North. Only two times I've ever blacked out, <laughs> Russians were involved. <laughs> so I have two rules on parties. No liquor without a label, and no Russians. <laughs> but already, the fighting begins. Somebody wants to buy a big chunk of Iceland. He says he's going to put a golf course there. He's Chinese. The Icelanders are nervous. But frankly, China could buy Iceland. Why not? These guys want to break off from Denmark. Why? They got 53 billion barrels of oil offshore, and they haven't even started digging into the green part. The new north is going to be absolutely fabulous. Canada, buy land. 